Spouses and partners hate this one trick. So you like buying things, you like collecting things. Now this could be sports cards, shoes, purses, golf clubs, toy trains, hats, firearms, watches, whatever. It's your treasure. But your gatekeeping spouse or partner, if they catch you adding something, anything new to your collection, then you know you will be catching a lot of crap for it. If this describes you, then your whole life has been building up to this very moment. Two words, zebra camouflage. Ready to change your world and become empowered to do way more damage to your credit rating than you ever thought possible? Let's get into it. Zebras, nature's freakish experimentation with weird camouflage. A quick search of Google tells me that scientists are still unsure exactly why Darwin painted them like an 80s metal hairband, and that's okay. Just look at them, just doing their thing. They don't give a crap that a lion can spot them from a half click out. Magnificent. Enter zebra camouflage. Zebra camouflage is the natural tipping point that your collection unlocks when you have so many treasures that your gatekeeper can no longer distinguish a new purchase from your existing collection. Crossing this threshold changes everything. It allows you to freely collect without fear of persecution. However, there is a ton to learn to get your collection from where it is right now to zebra camouflage and about how you can still mess it up once you get there. Confused about what I'm talking about? I got you. To mathematically demonstrate this principle and to assist the visual learners out there, I wanna share with you the gatekeeper graph. Now this is a scientifically accurate representation of how much crap you take each time you purchase a new treasure and grow the size of your collection. And by the way, I have to call it crap rather than to keep YouTube guidelines happy. So stop being so judgy over there when I say crap. It just is what it is. The y-axis is, as always, a visual representation of how much crap you take. The higher the number and the higher up on the y-axis as you go up means the more crap taken from your wife, husband, girlfriend, boyfriend, or whoever is gatekeeping you. Are you with me? So let's go one level deeper on this crap curve you will receive different amounts of crap, different levels of crap, thereby changing your crap curve depending upon the strength and stats of your opposing gatekeeper. This is most commonly understood as being composed of three different factors. Number one, the existing size of the collection in both raw numbers as well as the existing financial ruination that it has already brought down on your family. Number two, the amount of financial stress that the new purchase will bring and number three, the skill set of your gatekeeper. Now, there are documented instances where someone's collection was on the smaller side and meaningfully within their budget, but their gatekeeper, they just brought a strong crap game and was able to pump up their crap curve to chilling and unfair heights, thereby shrinking the size of the future collection. There are other recorded instances that I've uncovered from the records where men and women were able to juggle secretly max out credit cards, walk their family in, into the brink of losing their home, but their spouse, they were simply too bush league to hang with the big dogs. The skill set of your partner cannot be understated in its importance, but that's the topic of another video. If you want to see me go on about that, let me know in the comments section, but for now we press on. Okay, so let's get back to this graph. So we covered the Y axis and some of the factors that can go into that and change what the curve looks like. Now onto the X axis. The X axis represents the collection size. As you move from left to right, you are making new purchases, growing the collection, and each time you do so, it triggers a new crap event. You may notice that as your collection grows in size, each new purchase does even more crap damage per transaction than the last one. Since your gatekeeper keeps getting angrier and angrier as they helplessly watch your collection grow. And this is key, so pay attention. You may notice a massive cliff where the crap curve drops to nearly zero. Not zero, but nearly zero. This is where you have entered zebra camouflage. This means that with each new purchase, if you follow my collecting tips coming up, you can take virtually zero crap beyond the baseline crap that you constantly get simply for having something that you enjoy that makes you happy. But breathe freely, friend, you made it. But you can still mess this up and lose it. More on that in a bit. First, how do you get here and why do so few collectors know about zebra camouflage? You see, most amateurs, they quit somewhere in here 
where they were receiving enormous amounts of crap with each new acquisition. Us pros, we know that this is where you need to dig in, keep your head down, accept the couch time, and power through the curve to achieve zebra camouflage. The problem? You need to double and triple down your collection, give it the attention and resources that it deserves to unlock the potential where it needs to go. Okay, so Tom, how in the name of Thor's hammer do I get from here on the curve to get to where I need to be over here in zebra camouflage land? Teach me. Well, the specific importance of different skill sets will vary depending upon the type of collection you're trying to do. So just to name a few, your path to zebra camouflage likely requires a tricky understanding of finances, learning how to recognize and decline the evidence trap, as I call it. That's when the cashier tries to hand you a receipt for your gatekeeper to discover later. And learning how to ship things directly and discreetly to your office or workplace whenever possible. A word on that last one, look for those key office alliances with other people who are facing their own gatekeeper battles at home and learn how to cultivate those relationships. You will need to develop an ecosystem that is capable of communicating when a package is set to arrive, who's available or around to sign for it, who in the office or workplace has a relationship and may narc on you to the gatekeeper, how to safely store the packages while they await processing. Processing includes removing the newly acquired treasure from any product packaging and securely storing it for safe infiltration into your target dwelling. It should go without saying by now that boxes and any original packaging must be discarded outside the home. Now, as I already touched on, but I want to expand on because this is another vital key to your workplace team's survival. Be wary of your gatekeeper making too many spies or as they will call them, friends at your office. Think twice before including them in workplace parties and outings. Each of those events is a desperate roll of the dice that you are jeopardizing your chances at expanding your collection. Is that really worth connecting with your gatekeeper? Yeah, I thought so. So try to avoid the world's colliding Seinfeld moment that George warned you about back in the 90s. Let's talk about storage of your collection. It needs to be ideally kept out of sight so that it stays out of your gatekeeper's mind. A sprawl on your basement workbench or worse yet, countertops in your kitchen and around the house is going to invite constant scrutiny and attention. A certain level of disorganization serves a crucial double purpose of making it both difficult to detect new purchases as well as providing something for your gatekeeper to complain about while throwing them off the scent that you're secretly making new acquisitions. Some good feedback from your gatekeeper that lets you know that you are on the right path. If they constantly nag you to clean up your pile, heap, or mess. Mismanagement of either the acquisition process or the storage strategy can blow your zebra camouflage after it has been achieved. So you need to stay vigilant. Blowing it here can lead to the divorce graph or worse yet, for some of you, the divorce with kids graph. And you don't wanna see what that looks like. But enough with the tips. Let's take a quick look at an example so that you can see how this actually all works out. Meet Mitch. Mitch is a train collector guy. If Mitch adds a new engine, train car, or maybe a cool piece of terrain to his collection, but the collection has not yet achieved zebra camouflage, he will receive crap for it. His partner and gatekeeper, Emily, brings a powerful and well-rounded game after she leveled up her spotting skills, bullcrap detecting feats, and dishing it out traits. She also just thinks his train collecting is a little weird, and that has the effect of increasing her skill points when it comes specifically to his train collecting. Even though Mitch's train collection is still reasonably small, which by the way, is a score where we're looking at the proportionality between the size of the collection to both the financial resources of the household and your gatekeeper's stat sheet, Emily has an all pro crap curve so that she can give Mitch way more crap than Mitch would have received if he had just married Becky, like his friends told him to do in the first place. But Emily is like an eight and Mitch figured that was pretty legit and he decided to cash in his bachelor chips to the Merrill Bank. The climb to zebra camouflage though, would be far deadlier for Mitch with Emily than if he had just married Becky, who was cool with his trains and also earns a lot more money than Emily, which reduces the financial stress felt with each new train purchase. This is what Becky's crap curve would have looked like. Eventually, and importantly, you can achieve zebra camouflage with either Becky or Emily, but you will need to absorb a lot more crap from Emily, who can dish out a lot more crap more quickly and sustain it for longer than Becky. 
That's a rough road for Mitch. Good luck. But are you ready for the pro maneuver? Here's a bonus one for making it this far in the video. But before I do, if you like this, be sure to hit that like button. Comment down below what you think about all this. I really look forward to seeing your comments on this one. And don't forget to stick around for our ever popular quote of the day. Here's what I like to call a pro maneuver. You can pre-plan your expanding collection by investing in inexpensive items thrifted from secondhand stores to start with a much larger collection of cheap stuff and then you can slowly swap out the real deal for the cheap things as time goes along. In other words, if you play your cards right, you can start in zebra camouflage. Returning to our example, when Mitch started to get serious with Emily, or better yet, before he did, he would have gone thrifting to buy up dozens and dozens of train parts and trains and accessories and all that kind of stuff on the cheap. Yeah, they may not have been exactly what he wanted, but he's instant zebra camouflage. Then as he buys his new expensive train parts, he simply discards the old cheap ones or trades them away, and he maintains the same apparent collection size. See, aren't you glad you stuck around this far in the video? Now, it's also important to note that there are other factors I did not have time to cover in this video. Let me know in the comment field below if you do want me to go into them more. We're talking about kids, in-laws, and your gatekeepers annoying friends who come over way too often and ask way too many questions, and they should really just mind their own business and about how those can all factor into the chart. So I hope you enjoyed this brief crash course on zebra camouflage. Remember, this works both ways for men and women. There are no rules about which position you play on this chart, and sometimes you can each take turns depending upon who is collecting what and when. These and other advanced topics can also be covered in future videos. So again, if you, the good viewer, wants that, let me know down below. I look forward to seeing the comments section. Here's our quote of the day. This comes from noted comedian Will Ferrell, Quote, before you marry a person, you should first make them use a computer with slow internet to see who they really are, end quote. I hope you enjoyed this unusual video. I'll see you in the comment sections and in the next one. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this one, please feel free to check out some of our other great content and we'll see you in the next one.